Well, good evening, everyone. Thursday evening boat. Hope everyone's doing well. Good to see you. Um, it's been quite the day. Can't wait to share it with you. Um, it's going to be a little different today. Thank you for joining me, Vixen, Janet G, Jason P, Tara Smiling, Matrix Rabbit, The Seventh Son, Ben Bacon Bits, Sandy Wandy, our friend in Israel, Janet G, Teresa Baldessari, good to see you guys, Tina Jenkins, Valerie, Teresa, Nicola E, Sweet Liberty, Moni, how you guys doing, huh? It's been a pretty decent day, I have to say. Bless two crochet. Sorry about that earlier. Thanks for being patient and everything. Um, if you guys saw those two very short videos that are no longer there um, that I did earlier, I was attempting to coordinate a little bit better, but I think we figured out um, how we're going to do this moving forward. So that'll be cool. Um, yeah, I had a bunch of ideas swirling around today, and I was working on... Um, that time slot stuff. Um, and the day kind of got away from me. I had planned to come on and talk about consent, but I don't, uh, I think I'm going to table that until I'm properly ready. I don't want to breeze through that topic, if that makes sense. Um, so we're not gonna. We're not gonna. Conversations with Chrissy. Hey there. I had so much fun on her channel earlier today. Um, yeah. It was just a blast. Um, thank you to everybody that came over and checked us out. There will definitely be a part two. So stay tuned. Tara Smiling says that she consents to the conversation about waiting for consent. Consent to waiting for the conversation about consent. Say that five times fast. Plant Freak agrees with me. Yep, that has been happening a lot. They just runs away. You know, it maybe it's a sign that I'm in the right place doing the right thing. You know, I don't know. I try to not take it as, uh, as a negative. I try to take it as it comes. Um, so yeah, instead of that, I figure we'll just uh, kind of bounce around a little bit. I have a bunch of little things to talk about. Um, that all kind of like wrap wrap together our last couple of days, I guess. I also had an idea. I thought like about reading um, some literature on the boat, like maybe have like a day, but I'm pretty sure that's like against the traditions of the books I was thinking about. So I'm going to table that until I consult an expert. We're not a part of any organization, so to speak, but... Um, the jury is out on whether or not um, I can read 12 step literature on TV. So I'm going to find out if I can do that before I actually do that. I think, cause I think that would be really fun. You know, if we could like read once a week, you know, have like a, a book study day, I think that would be so cool. Um, so if I can't do it with 12 step literature, um, if that is against the traditions, we're going to go ahead and respect that. Cause that's the kind of, that's the quality of humans we are. And uh, we're going to go ahead and, and find a different book that will serve the same purpose. How many of you would come to um, a weekly like book study kind of thing where we, I don't know, we would probably do like a chapter a week or something and then talk about it. So we would read, I, I would read to you probably, you know, and then y'all could get your own books, read along, but we could talk about it the second half, like after getting through a chapter or, you know, whatever we can make it however we want. But how many of you would like that idea? Valerie's hip. Brianna Miller, I also like Trivia Night, but I think that's a Saturday thing. Um, so stay tuned for that. I'm super into that as well. Um, swirling all kinds of ideas. I feel like the fun stuff is less important, so I don't give it as much attention, but it is very important. Getting overwhelming support. For the book study. Heck yeah. Drop the rock. I'm going to go ahead and write that down and buy me a copy. I 
Um, I know my dad um, would talk about 12 step programs in a certain light. And I'm sure if you've caught any of my videos so far, uh, you know that I stand in a different place on that subject. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, they're near and dear to my heart. And I think that they have a lot to offer. So yeah, that's that idea just came from pulling from the tools that I have at my disposal, I guess. Um, da, 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 da. If you dig what we're doing here, good evening, Jamie Smith. How are you? Matrix Rabbit, I believe that's the name of a book that someone suggested that I'm going to check out. Heard you, Lumen, definitely. Um, that's why I'm saying like once a week. And again, it doesn't even have to be a 12-step book. I'm just talking about reading literature that pertains to our subject matter. So I understand not everyone's super hot on the 12-step thing. Um, and I don't intend to be preaching at all. Welcome back, Third Eye Open. Good to see you. I'm glad you made it. The Relator Raid is in. How was it? I didn't catch, uh, I caught maybe like five minutes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, I was trying to identify which traditions, if any, it's against. And there was like four different traditions in the back of the book I was looking at uh, that may or may not um, pertain to reading, reading it on YouTube. So. I'll figure it out, see if that's good or not. Um, so I guess very, very thankful, Yadira. I am very grateful. If I'm monotone, it's just because I, my brain is a tornado. So my, my outward appearance has to portray the calm. Yeah, it would definitely be a critical analysis rather than a straight read. Like we would talk, we would read, and then we would take a, the second portion of the show. Like after we read a chapter or however much, um, we would talk about it and analyze and discuss, right? Where everybody would weigh in. It would be like a group project. And a banana. Hey there, I see you. Yeah, I was thinking about this today too, Tara. She says that I think the big book and 12 by 12 need to be revised to reflect the fellowship stance on social media. And, you know, I think there's a bunch of things in today's world that um, have like, I think, I think that the world has evolved beyond like the literature, if that makes sense. Just because it was a very different world when those books were written. That speaker tape that I have, which was after AA had gotten traction, like 1950 something. I can't remember all the dates and whatnot, but like, it's so old and it was already after they had accomplished things. Um, so I think that a lot of things in today's world are, have changed. There's so many things that are very different. Social media, how we communicate with each other. Um, did I write down these things? I should have. Please hold. Oh, these appendixes are so fun. One of those pages was entitled Crack. <laughs> um, yeah, I lost it. It's all right. It's not just social media, though. Like there's a number of uh, there's a number of situations, issues. I don't know what the right way to say that it is factors in today's world that were not taken into account when those books were written because they didn't. Those factors didn't exist. You know, they're products of this new world that we live in. Um, also, consent kind of goes in that same like consent is a word that has grown in popularity recently, and I think that's because ideals collectively as like a race of people of humans has is changing like collectively um i think i can relate it to like the fight for women's rights you know in recent memory in living memory right in the last century 
which one's a hundred a century i think century is a hundred in the last 100 years women weren't weren't didn't have the right to vote in this country wrap your brain around that that's one lifetime um so i think that the world is changing evolving for the better in a lot of ways um but a lot of these new concepts um are bringing old concepts up um to be re-understood and I think consent falls in there too. Um, it's much more the lack of, I don't know. See, this is why I don't want to talk about consent because I'm not ready, but it, that totally relates to what we're talking about. The evolving world and change. Um, I, until this point, the 12 steps and their programs have been like the, regardless of the statistics, like the best hope, you know, the highest success numbers, even though they're abysmal numbers, you know what I mean? They've basically been the authority on getting sober. Um, and they pretty much still are right. But uh, you know, all oh, that, that brings, that reminds me a lot of the traditions and a lot of the, the ways that it, those programs are structured limits it in media limits it. And, and a lot of these traditions are good, right? They serve a good purpose. Um, I think one of the things said declining outside financial contributions, lest we not lose our way kind of thing. Like they're all structured to, to keep the focus on recovery, community connection um, at the cost of everything else. Right. So there, I think that's a double-edged sword. I think that there's a way that we can, we can keep the good, and and observe the good and uh, modify things that aren't serving right and i think that's also the essence of recovery is finding things that work for you and then like modifying the things that don't right just because it worked for someone else doesn't mean it worked for you there's a million ways to go about this what's important is that we go about it you know what's important is that you go about it intelligently or you're bound to fail it's just the nature of the beast. Miss Chief says the AA 12 step program saved mine and my daughter's life. It works if you work it. I will be sober 25 years this time next week. And my daughter will be 25 years clean from opiates in October. Wow. That's a serious block of time. I think I spent. I don't know. That's some, that's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Thank you for sharing that with us, Miss Chief. I want to scroll back up. Lumen says mental health has come a long way since 1939 when the big book was written. Yeah. Let, I can't forget the mental health. That's why I think this live format is so good. Um, y'all, y'all think the things that I don't. Love you, Spanx. I love you too, Noise Opera. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Hey, Patty Collins. I hope you feel better, all right? Get some rest. I bet you Dr. Bob and Bill did had no idea like how big their idea was was bound to get. I bet you when they sat down in that in that kitchen and attempted to keep each other sober, they had no idea that that moment would echo throughout the rest of human history. Like, that's pretty freaking cool. What a hero. You know what I mean? And they were just two degenerate alcoholics that uh, wanted to live. They wanted to live better. They wanted a little more. Wild, mind blowing, crazy stuff, crazy good. A little better than Frosted Flakes, just a little. My tum tum is feeling so much better. I don't know what happened, but it's just magically better. Um, so I'm not complaining. It must have been all the well wishes from the crew. Magic, right? Marshall Stacks didn't exist in 1920. Man, what a beautiful time to be alive, eh, Ben? 
What a beautiful time to be alive. Hmm. One of my biggest fears is like running people off with my radical new ideas. Cause that's not what I want. Ideally I come up with like a, a formula or shows that um, everybody feels welcome at and everybody gets value from, gets benefit from, right? Ideally, um, we can serve everybody regardless of whatever circumstances. And, you know, realistically, that's not going to be the case. One, 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 111 people watching. This is a beautiful moment. Um, yes. Can't please everybody, but I am definitely going to strive as long as I'm sitting in this chair um, to make this place as accessible, as safe, and as um, relatable, um, yeah, as possible. I think that that is the essence of success here. I think that's what's going to enable us to complete our mission. And not that our mission's ever done, right? But to be effective in it. Lisa Trimble says, don't agree with changing the big book. It's basic and the things in it are a good thing. Creating a new book that takes into account today could be great. It, it helped me get sober 15 years. Heck yeah, Lisa. I guess I should um, speak more specifically because I definitely, I agree with you, Lisa. I don't think we should rewrite the big book, even though I'm pretty sure now that I'm thinking about it, those are the exact words that came out of my mouth. Um, I, I mean, I don't think that you should take away from the big book. You know what I mean? I think that definitely should be a new or at least like a, a, a new book. That's a study on like into the change, you know, what's changed, how we can apply similar concepts to these new um, situations and factors. Um, and actually it's funny you bring that up when I was going through the traditions, that's one of the, or a number of the traditions is not to, not to change it, not to lend the name to any, this, that, or the other. It's very interesting. Very, very intelligently written and structured for two degenerate alcoholics. I think they did pretty darn good. Addendum. See, the thing about relating it to the actual big book is that um, like, there's no governing body right? Those programs are governed by the people from within. So there's like this much chance there will be a, re a rewrite or an addendum. Like that book is going to be just how it is until the end of time, uh, because it is literally against the traditions to do so, to, to make an addendum. So, and maybe I'm misunderstanding it. I was never like a, an expert on, on the actual literature, but it certainly seems to me that you're not supposed to do any of that. And then also there's not really any governing bodies other than how they govern themselves. So there's that. Lol. Did I seriously greet myself back there? Heck yeah. You're in the right place. <laughs> The only constant is change. I love that statement so much. Kafik, I don't think I've ever said hello to you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Just love listening to your calming voice. Great things are coming your way. Thank you. I hope so. I, uh, I've been doing this number, crossing the fingers, and then just kind of like look into the sky. Like, all right, you can rain, you can rain money and, and safety and security on me now. You know, you can just bless me with your everlasting lack of fear. That would be cool. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I feel great. It does feel like beautiful things are coming my way. It feels like I'm currently receiving karmic gifts that I'm not entirely sure that I deserve, but I'm not also not complaining. You know, I'm definitely going to meet it head on and, uh, and do my best to, to, to prove myself worthy. I tell you what, who, who are you? Uh, that would be Hope, Faith, and Courage, Volume 2. Stories and...
I don't know if I can show this, but I just did. That's a little test. We'll just run a test. I thought about calling my old sponsor and asking him like, hey, can I read the book on TV and see what he said? But I figured that would like lead to the big old conversation that I didn't have time for. So shout out to, to my, my guy, my old sponsor. Look forward to talking to you here soon, buddy. You do not have to believe in God to work the steps, but you do have to believe in a higher power, which is just a much longer way of saying God. But I mean, your higher power can be defined by you in any way, right? So that's the trick there. What they're trying to do is, is make it less difficult for people to, to like accept because it's not lost on the founders that religion is, is very polarizing, right? And the word God is pretty much synonymous with religion everywhere you go. So yeah, I think that their, their attempt to make it easier to digest was with the higher power. But at the end of the day, if you can just let go of that little fact, you know, just believe in something greater than yourself. The earth itself, this giant rock is hurtling through space with billions, trillions of humans walking around on it. We are hurtling through space at really like speeds that you can't imagine. And we're just walking around, drinking water, you know, playing with trophies, you know, that's mind blowing. That itself, the, the earth is larger than me. You know what I mean? The whole concept, the idea of the higher power is something bigger than yourself. It's designed to get you to come out of of yourself and recognize that it's not just about you. And, and there's a lot, there's a lot more to it, right? But and I'm totally generalizing. But I I, I think it's silly that people get hung up on the God thing. Cause like, that's like the smallest part about the whole thing. It's like just a three letter word that really bothers some people. And I get it. I get it too. You know, there was definitely times in my life where I wasn't a huge fan of that word, but I definitely wasn't going to stop me from like saving my own life. You know what I mean? I definitely wasn't going to let it stop me from like bettering my life. If that word was the only thing that stood between me and recovery, I'm knocking that word down, you know? So that's my two cents. That's my 50 cent. Shelly Kelly says, going to Gamblers Anonymous brought me back to my faith. I love hearing stuff like that. And not because I'm religious or spiritual or, you know, whatever I am, just because statements like that fill me with joy. You know, I can tell going to Gamblers Anonymous brought me back to my faith. That is a statement of, of joy from Shelly. Um, try to see things through that kind of lens. Like she's saying this because she's stoked on it. This changed her life. You know what I mean? It has nothing to do with me and what I believe it has everything to do with me supporting Shelly and being stoked that she did something good, you know, for herself, something that changed her life. Right. Is everybody following? I always get a little nervous before the show. Like, Oh, what am I going to talk about? Uh, and it just the show does itself. We're killing it. Look at us. Sierra Terry says someone in the opto op 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 in the eye doctor's office yesterday insisted on paying for my frames. I'm still in shock. I said I needed to pay her back and she said just pay it forward. Ain't that a beautiful thing? Ain't that a beautiful thing? I feel like that's the universe sending you a sign. Like, hey, good job. You know? When you, when you don't pat yourself on the back, sometimes the universe does it for you or, you know, whatever is bigger than you. Signs are sent. Thank you, Lester Crochet. Oh, that brings me to this. I guess I should say this before I forget, since uh, I'm at it, I'm like committed to not giving out my phone number. I think I'm going to communicate with um, the conversations that uh, require like uh, immediate attention. I think it's uh, hard to have a present conversation in the email because it's just I don't know, the way that it works, at least for my brain. So I'm going to start using Facebook Messenger to get in touch with my ripples um, and set up this time slot thing. Um, I Again, I appreciate everyone's patience. I know that you guys are just being really patient. I'm probably the most impatient part of this conversation. So I just wanted to express how much I appreciate y'all and uh, 
so excited to to send those messages out and start start going. Um, I did some tests today and learned a whole lot. Shout out to um, those of you that helped me out with that. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm going to try restream out as well, just so that I can do everything. Um, like to meet people where they're at. So uh, the fact that I don't know how Restream works is a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and educate myself on that tonight. When I wake up and we do the morning boat tomorrow, I'm going to be an expert on Restream. So prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves. NBR, nothing but ripples. I do like that a whole lot. I do like that a whole lot. Look, look what happens when you all get together and get creative. Can't wait to see the imagery. Love you too, Sierra. Thank you for saying that. You know, I think that I'm like a low-key closet gambling addict because we're talking, I think all I've read was that one statement about gambling anonymous and now this, and now I'm thinking like, man, I should go do a poker tournament and make a bunch of money. And that's not what would happen. I would go, I would lose all my money and I would be really irritated about it afterwards. Um, I think I definitely am a gambling addict that has just not given myself enough time to become like sick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I need to stay far, far away from casinos, I think. They are not for me. They're a lot of fun, which I think is the problem. Zarina says, that's why I think online gambling is so dangerous. Imagine having to carry your drug of choice around with you all day and night. Good Lord. Yeah, that's a scary thought. Like my my addiction is just on here, connected to all my bank accounts. You know what I mean? No, no thank you. Holy crap. Look at my, my dad's got my back. Or maybe that's stepmommy Reese. <laughs> I hope she's watching so she can see that. I think that's hilarious. I'm just joking, by the way, everyone. Please don't take me serious. I do not support um, infidelity of any of any kind. But also, you know, we're not going to talk about that at all. I can relate with you, V. McWilliams. I hope you get some good rest, all right? I look forward to seeing you again soon. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? It certainly seems very controlling and segmented. I'm sorry to hear that, Kristen. Feel better. Wishing you better feels. I remember the first time the ATM said, you can't have any more money today at the uh, casino. Um, I will never forget that. I was actually there with my buddy from AA. And we pulled an all-nighter. Sober. Sober as a whistle. Me and my buddy Tyson. Shout out to Tyson. Love you, buddy. Uh, hope you're doing all right. Uh, we, we pulled an all-nighter in Wendover. We, we drove out in his car. Spent literally all of our money. Both of our banks cut us off at the ATM. I think I spent five. I think I withdrew 500. I probably spent like 700 to 1,000. I don't know. But just blew all this money. And then we made it back to Salt Lake just in time to catch the morning meeting at the local um, Alano Club. <laughs> just sick, degenerate behavior. I should give Tyson a call. I wonder how he's doing now. Yeah, I definitely have love for Reese, and it has nothing to do with anything. It's just ambient love. She's so lovable, you know? It's so fun. I, I totally get it, Lisa. Lisa Tremble. Lisa says, I used to play 25-cent slot machines at the beach with my kids. I had to stop. Really out of hand. It's like I, I can totally relate with that. I tell you what. I tell you what, I'm glad that you're not playing the 25 cent slots right now, Lisa. You're hanging out with us instead. Uh, 
funny thing about Google Cosmic, um, in the terms of service, I don't know if it's the terms of service or a similar document for Gmail, but when you die, Google takes possession and ownership of everything contained within your Gmail account. I don't know what that actually per, like translates to in the real world. Like, what are they going to do with my information? But it's just food for thought. That's another thing that's changed a ton, I think, in today's world. Information is the, the new currency. Um, all these Chinese companies, like, are... The, all these Chinese programs are becoming more prevalent and sold to Amer America. And I'm not going to like say that there's a conspiracy or anything like that, but uh, TikTok is stealing your data. It's proven. Um, I'm trying to think of some other programs. I play some games like League of Legends and Helldivers that use kernel-based anti-cheat software. And I know if you're not a nerd, that means nothing. But uh, suffice it to say, in a nutshell, um, the kernel is... Like if you were to compare your computer to a tree, like a giant oak tree, the kernel is the roots or like the seed, like the very origin, the beginning, right? So everything that your computer does processes through the kernel or from the kernel. And I might not be saying this exactly right, but the, the essence and the point is the same. You do not need a kernel based program to fight cheaters in video games. What that's doing is giving these companies access to every piece of information, every keystroke on my computer, all your passwords, literally everything from the kernel can be accessed. So um, I think I'm noticing this huge change in the way information is handled and the way that we view the security of information and its importance. I think most people aren't even aware that these things are going on. Um, in fact, until very recently, I didn't even uh, check to see what my anti-cheat programs were doing. You know, I didn't even think to check the, uh, the history of companies that are using kernel-based software. And, you know, come to find out, I start doing some research. They, <laughs> a lot of these companies have a history of leaking your information or having a security breach with your information. And also for those of you that don't know, um, the reason information is valuable is because if someone has your passwords or your credit card information or like identifiable information, like your social or whatever, they can sell that on the black market to someone who's going to steal your identity or someone who's going to use it for criminal activity. So there's like this whole network going on of people stealing information or people that have information and then sell it. And maybe the company is not selling it, but someone inside the company that has the keys to all the stuff thinks he can make a little bit of money on the side, right? But that's the kinds of things that are happening. So can't remember how we got into this, but Timu is one of them. I like Timu, but the reason all their stuff is super duper cheap is because they're probably, and I haven't done any uh, research on Timu, but that website screams stealing information to me. And you know, Janet, this may be due to completely unrelated happenings. You know, your PayPal information could have been um, retrieved off of like a, a virus that you downloaded, or it could be because, you know, maybe you're a relative of yours is playing games on your computer and did something unsafe. Uh, you know, there's a myriad of reasons. There's so many different ways that information, especially in today's age, where all of our info is on our phone, it's on our computer, I've got multiple computers, you know, I've got one at work, and I've got different accounts and different passwords. And often I'm trying to get something done in a, on, in a time frame. So, you know, if there's, if I need to download a tool or something, you know, in a pinch, I'm not going to check, make sure that it's okay, I'm just going to get it and use it to hit my deadline. You know, there's, we live in a world today where it's like a hacker's dream for sure. For sure, for sure. Why did we start talking about this? I can't even remember. Kernel based software. I got talking about games and forgot my purpose.
Well, connection and communication, regardless of the different mediums they exist in, will always be the same. You know, connecting and communicating is what we're doing here. Um, and I guess the only thing I have to add on top of that is a lot of you are already doing this great, but, you know, especially if you're new around here, let people get to know you. It's one thing to be in this space, but in order to properly use the tools at our disposal here, you have to get, get to know people and let them get to know you. Otherwise, when you're in a pinch, you're still not going to have anyone to call. And even if you do in a pinch, are you going to feel comfortable calling someone that you haven't let get to know you a little bit? So I challenge everyone here to let someone get to know you a little bit um, if you haven't already. Um, also, the past couple shows, we've talked about tools and, um, you know, some real core basics and key concepts and whatnot. And I think that it's important to note all of those things that we talked about, all of those tools and these concepts that we've talked about are absolutely useless if you don't do the work. And what, what I mean by that is the work is like what you're doing for your recovery, like how you're peeling the onion and getting to the bottom of like why you used in the first place, right? It's not enough to just say like, I'm an addict, I have a disease, you know, I accept this. You, um, in order to actually recover, in order to, to do this successfully, we actually need to do the work and get to the bottom of, of why we feel this way, of why we actually use. So it, you know, all these tools are well and good, but you've got to start journaling and you've got to start rebuilding your life, your body and your mind. You know, I'm not going to harp on exercise too much, but you've got to find a new lifestyle. You can't go back to the places that you were going and hang out with the people that you were hanging out with. If you're like me, it's going to require a complete makeover of your whole life. Um, and if you're not writing stuff down and if you're not, you know, trying to rediscover and rebuild yourself and who you are then all of these tools are not going to serve you. That's the most important work is, is the work that we, we do on ourselves to, to, to discover the truth of why. And I guess I shouldn't say why too much because it's not enough to ask why. It's you, you must ask, how can I move forward? How can I get through this? How can I do better? Asking why is too easily said from a victim's point of view. You can't be a victim and say, how do I move forward? like oxymorons, they don't mix. Thank you, Miss Chief. I really, really like this hat. <laughs> and I don't know if it's intentional, but the way that your name is structured, I can't tell if you're playing on the word mischief or if you're just Ms. Chief. Either way, I love it. Rihanna Miller asks, do you think addiction is mostly genetic or trauma or both. I definitely think both. Um, I was really against the concept of the genetic part of it growing up because I just thought that was unfair. Well, regardless of if it's fair or not, it probably has some truth to it in substance. Um, I definitely think that trauma can drive us to scary places, but I'm definitely biased. I definitely have a genetic predisposition in every side of my family um, for addiction. So it's hard for me to answer that question unbiased because I'm not unbiased. Like to keep that self meditation on deck. Yes, I do. And that's self meditation. Ben Bacon Bits says, get brilliant at the basics. Learn that from a friend who is a tier one operator in the military, works in many contexts. And you know, Ben, I think all the best um, little uh, secrets or tricks apply that way in many concepts. Um, this is one that I have not heard and I really like that. Get brilliant at the basics. Janet G, thank you so much. Thank you for the tremendous support the other day on Sober Guilt had a beautiful conversation with one of my stepdaughters the other day and she was so gracious and forgiving. It was healing. It was a healing step in the right direction. Heck yeah. I'm going to be pulling this thing out a whole lot. I tell you what, I can already tell because there's just all kinds of hope and joy and success going on here. That's awesome. That is so cool, Janet. You know, it's hard to picture it going badly, you know, not that it isn't possible, but 
I feel like in my heart, I knew that was going to go well. And I'm so glad that it did. Say what says, I think I traced my feeling of not good enough began when I was in third grade. That was 50 years ago. And I still remember the feeling. I bet you never forget how that felt. That's one of those formative memories. That's one of those experiences that would shape you moving forward. I would be willing to bet. And I have to say that I can relate. Not feeling good enough or worthy is one of like the core character flaws in me. Um, for sure. And I do a little bit of work on that every day. Some days a whole lot more than others, but. Thank you for sharing that. Say what? Say what? Thank you. Getting ready for gigs out of state. I used to always love doing gigs out of state, Re Rex and Messler. I'm glad you made it. Good luck uh, with your travel and your work. Um, I hope you have a blast, man. Stay safe out there. You know, Aliyup, Aliyup says, I have a hard time with meditation. So hard to keep my brain quiet. I bet you that this, this is a common, uh, a common feeling among uh, addicts and, and just people like us. I think that, I think that this is totally believable. I personally agree and have had similar experiences. Um, I don't know if I have any words of wisdom on how to get closer to success with that. just takes practice, I guess. Honestly, there were certain points in my, in my sobriety and my recovery where I don't think I was capable of meditating, but later came to a place where I found it much easier, you know? Um, so I wouldn't get hung up on it, you know, but there are undeniable benefits to meditation. So if you, if you can meditate, I would, I would recommend it. We all set our own value, Miss Chief. I'm a huge believer in that. Miss Chief says, when I did my steps, not meeting up to expectations was so obvious. Life got better when I started to match up to my own. Amen. It's crazy how we twist things around in our heads and only come to realize how mixed up we were after we like start writing it down and like saying the words out loud. And then it's like, oh, that didn't come out right. Is this what I, is this what I believe? <laughs> Heck yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Brittany Van Brakel, haven't said hello to you yet today. Thank you so much. Just wanted to send love and good vibes. This channel helps quiet my mind. Your voice is soothing. And although I only suffer from depression, lately I come here for peace. I like how you said I only suffer from depression. Uh, dude, depression sucks. Um, I don't think that there's anything to minimize there. I mean, I guess I'm glad that you're not suffering from other things, but, um, you know, you're in the right place. I'm glad you're here. And I get depressed all the time. Y'all I, I can relate. I'm glad that we bring you peace. I think my word for the day is serenity. We're going to run with that. One of my favorite words of all time. Nicola E says, I don't believe meditation is about quieting your brain. It's about techniques to tune it in. That makes sense to tune it. I think I would agree. I definitely found success with meditation when it wasn't as important to me, like how it went, right? Whatever thoughts are going through my, my brain, I would just like say hello to them and then just like kind of let go. Like there's no need to explore this thought. It just is. I had it. What else is going on kind of thing. And that, that helped a lot. March 12th. I see you. Hey, Ann Hummingbird. Good to see you. My eyes are feeling so much better in Anthony Schmancy. Holy crap. I can't tell you how alarming that was. And I, again, I, I said it a couple times already, but I think it was partially in my head. Like it was definitely real, but um, I definitely can have, I have the ability to, to make things worse than they are just by thinking about it too much. I saw, I read some comment about somebody 
burning their eyeballs ice fishing. And I thought about that for too long. And, uh, and I started to feel my eyeballs dry out and burn. And I was like, ah, I immediately went and got these glasses and felt better. I do have to say when I'm not live, I need to make sure that I'm breaking up the time that I'm looking at the screen. Um, even with the glasses, I can't look at the screen for all my waking hours. I will end up in the same boat. Yes, ma'am. I see you, Brazy Girl Vitalux. I have it written down and I have a list. I have a list of things that I'm gonna, going to be getting on Monday. Um, can't wait to have the healthiest eyes in town. Do they make screen protectors for your phone? Like, could I just put something on my screen that'll filter out the blue light? Because that would be friggin' sweet. That's a million dollar idea if it's not already existing. And how many birds says I have minty eyes tonight? <laughs> that made me laugh for some reason. I felt like saying so. And it's my pleasure, Yadira. Yadira says, thanks for keeping the boat afloat. My absolute pleasure. There's a mode? I mean, there is dark mode, but I mean actually filtering the blue light out. I, I have changed my interesting. StreamYard is still white, but everything else is black. I have dark mode on my browser, but StreamYard doesn't want to cooperate. I wonder if I can change that in the settings. Probably not. Garbage programs. You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a programmer. But then I like started to learn programming and it was so thought intensive that it started to give me headaches. And I thought, I'm good. I'm not going to do this. But to this day, I see how programs could be written better, could could just be better and more intuitive. Like why, why doesn't StreamYard go black? when the everything else is black. Poorly coded, that's why. Mara says I like to meditate outside at night under the stars. Maybe one day I'll connect with someone out there listening, keeping hope alive, we're not alone. You know, I have to agree with all of that. Something that I've been missing a whole lot is a star strewn night sky. Um, I can't wait to get out and go camping uh, in my new environs. Programming's way tough, way above my pay grade, I tell you what. I count beats or breaths until my mind calms. You know, one of the first meditations that I got into that was really easy for me to wrap my brain around was mindfulness. One of my therapists, I think it was freshman year, told me about this. Um, and basically how I applied it is I would take a shower and I would just kind of let the water like wash over me. I would just kind of put my head under the water, and make sure I could breathe and then just kind of kind of hang out and focus on the water and the droplets and where the water was running, which parts of my body it was running off of the breath going into my lungs and out and like just simple associations of feeling and sensation in the shower mindfulness was pretty cool that oh, that opened the floodgates for sure that helped me a lot blue light blockers on amazon donna you are a lifesaver putting it on the list Erlen lenses, ADHD streamer with light sensitivity issues. Add audio sensitivity and that's me. I am a sensitive little, little sucker. I just pretend that I'm not. So I don't want to be viewed as like weak subconsciously. It's not a, like, yeah, I get that that's not realistic, right? But I know myself. Uh, what am I doing? Writing this down. That's what I'm doing. Gosh, what would I do without you, crew? I would be suffering. That's what I'd be doing. <laughs> Let's be real here. <laughs> I appreciate y'all so much. 
Sounds like we're two peas in a pod. Maybe she's like my long lost sibling. I'm going to have to go check her out. Feel free to let me know what, uh, what channel so I can go check it out. Riley's hang. Seventh, you are the man. I appreciate you, brother. I can't wait to bust the hammock out. I guess I got to bust it out now before it gets too hot. Maybe that's what I'll do tomorrow for nap time. Yeah, is Uncle Johnny here? It's a good question. You never know when he might be lurking. Is a honey-do list when I'm like, hey, honey, will you do? Is that what that is? <laughs> Third Eye Open says, I am part vampire. I love the dark with and without the moon. Dead of night calls to me every night. I have to agree with you. But I can't deny the call of the sun as well. I'm definitely... A creature of two worlds, I feel like. I have these dual sides always. I can't ever decide on one thing. It's very interesting. Very Pisces of me. Miss Chief, I hope you sleep well. Thanks for hanging out with us. Super late. Banana hammock. Hey there. Hey now. Got me a bucket hat, dude. Oh, man. I'm going to have to start sending you things back. Not like returns. I mean, like, I'm going to start feeling like I I need to do nice things for you, Seventh. Be careful. <laughs> I appreciate you so much. I love bucket hats. If the email you sent to Johnny was kicked back to you, I'll inquire. I'll make an inquiry and see what's going on. Johnny got the bucket. Okay, okay, okay. I follow. Yeah, my birthday is the 21st, and um, I'm like the second or the third day, I believe. So I'm on the cusp with Aquarius, they say. That's what they say. There's Mo Love popping in. Glad you made it. Welcome. You just caught us uh, wrapping up and kind of hanging out and chilling. We got through all the meat. Well, did we get through all the meat and potatoes or just most? Let's look. No, we did it. We did the whole dang thing. Really good, Mo. How are you? I feel like they use a leaf blower on the clippings every morning where I live. I don't know what the heck they're blowing out there. There's no friggin' leaves. It's really, one day I'm going to go out there and be like, yo, what are you doing? Why are you using a leaf blower? There's no leaves. Maybe they're out there just doing, doing stuff they shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't go out there and say anything. I don't know, but it bugs me every morning. I've got a lot of Cancers and Leos in my life right now. It's interesting that you say that, Ann. I'm glad you're good, Mo. Better than not good, I tell you what. I feel like I'm about to get the hiccups. Do you ever like feel the hiccups coming on? Because that's happening. Well, y'all, Emily D. Baker, I'm going to write that down too. You guys have all the list info. I think that that brings us to the top of the hour, and I'm probably going to wrap this up. Sorry, Mo, I know you just got here. A new challenger approaches. A name to the hiccups. 
That hour did fly by. Where did it go? I feel like since I started trying to split my days into two days, by that I mean being awake for eight hours and then sleeping for four and then doing it again, um, I feel like everything is more fleeting. It definitely feels like I have less time to do things, even though it's the exact same amount of time to split differently. But so far, so good. I don't think it's not working, but it definitely could be working better. So we'll see. We'll see. Tomorrow's a new day. Hey, Plant Freak. I'm good. glad to see you. I did not have time to reach out, um, but I promise that I will. Blast from the past, new member, me member, member, member. Getting my words mixed up, I'm tired. It's probably about that time. I hate goodbyes, they suck. I have to say goodbye to you guys twice a day. What the heck, you know what I mean? What the heck? I'm a big fan of Irish goodbyes though. Or as I like to call them, Canadian goodbyes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Bye bye. No, uh, it's I had a lot of fun today, everyone. Um, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, hit the bells for notification. Um, keep an eye out for the ripples. I tomorrow, if we play our cards right, we might actually hit play on some. Um, if we hopefully don't run into problems, but. We're getting closer every day, um, and I appreciate your patience. Yeah, hit that like, subscribe, and all of that. I appreciate every single one of you for showing up and, and just hanging out and talking and being vulnerable with me. This is pretty neat. Um, show yourself some love and uh, pass it on to someone else as well. We'll see you tomorrow morning, all right?